said in the Hino Hut before, and this is Fabian Coulthard. He's got a 10-point slender margin over his teammate. But you made the point before when we had a little brief conversation about this, and you've done a snapshot on the story here. It's hard to recover from ninth on a grid. Tell the rest of the story. Exactly. So McLaughlin currently first. And if they finish where they are now, first and ninth, there's 66 points that will be damaged in the lead of Fabian Coulthard. If Winkup stays second and Fabian Coulthard finishes ninth, it's 54 points. So huge ramifications for Fabian Coulthard in ninth. He's got a lot of work to do this afternoon, Neil. This is a big, big assignment to come from ninth, and it's a dangerous part of the field also. Fortunately, he's not listening to you. <laughs> and yes. He's got his eyes on for a car race at the moment because that's actually slightly depressing when you're the championship leader. It underscores how much work he's got to do. It's going to be a critical start. Alex Rulo popping into position. There's now just 10 points between Fabian and teammate Scott McLaughlin, as we point out, with Jamie six behind. McLaughlin's on the pole. Wind Cup shares row one. Row two, it's teammates Boston Waters. The supercars are shining in the Queensland sunshine. 70 laps, 200 k's in Townsville. And away, a great start by Wind Cup. He may well have command as they get through the kink in turn one. It's Wind Cup, McLaughlin followed by Mostert, and then it's an angry pack beyond that. It certainly is, and down the inside, a massive dive there from Van Gisbergen, who gets the back of Winterbottom. Fabian Coulthard, series leader, spins. Jason Bright makes contact. This could not be any worse. We said before the start that he was a dangerous spot. This is the ramification. Right, mate, Keedy's engineer, incredibly bad break for Fabian Coulthard. And look at Van Gisbergen trying to make an opportunistic pass down the inside of Reynolds. Todd Kelly, huge damage on the boat sails entry for Nissan Altima. So Winterbottom made a great aggressive start and he got himself up in front of Chaz Mostert here. Chaz has a look down the inside at 11. Win Cup has command of the race, a, per a perfect start. And one of the Mobile One HSV cars in the background with a lot of damage in the mid pack there. So did Van Gisbergen's lunge cause that? That's the one. There's a door open for Lee Holdsworth. The right-hand door is open. James Courtney is the one with all the damage. There's smoke coming off car 22. Tanda's got big damage in the right front corner of the Wilson Security Hold the Commodore. So McLaughlin stalking wind cup from Winterbottom. Mostert, Waters, Reynolds, Van Gisbergen, Percat, Caruso, Holdsworth. Down the inside comes Smyrna. Simona Di Silvestro. Courtney's in trouble on the outside and the grey side sure. of the road. You got a lot of damage there, mate. You have to boss this lap. They're going to bring James in as they go to work now on Tim Slade's car. They park Todd Kelly's car. Hurling themselves, trying to secure the bonnet. Frank Adamson from Supercars on the front right in the light blue overalls. We go inside the Nissan Motorsport garage now as they try and repair the front of Todd's car. That's not going to fit. That's a lot of damage on the front of that car now. McLaughlin's in a spot. They hit the fence. They bumped the fence on the way out of there. McLaughlin has got a run on him. Can he get down the inside at turn 13? You fake to the right, fake to the right, dive left. He's dive left, he's down there. Great job. Can he make it stick? Yes, he does. Beautiful manoeuvre. Created that well from turn 11. Set him up and executed perfectly. It's a very good job. The trail breaking for car 17. Very impressive for McLaughlin. They're feeding out past Slade with that damaged Commodore, and he's arrived straight in the middle of the lead pack here, and he splits Wind Cup from Winterbottom. He's got, a, he's got to try and sneak down the inside, which he does. So an amazing number of key runners with big damage early in this race. Coulthard, who's up and running once again, has just done the fastest lap of the race as a result of the fresh air that he's got. That was a textbook beautiful move from McLaughlin at the final turn at 13 as Mostert now goes for a run down the inside of Slade. Mostert won't be liking this, seriously. Slade's got to get out of the way. Just get the car out of the way. Or he's going to be, he doesn't need to be wide there either. So... There'll be a bit of flack about that in pit lane. There's all the damage on the Mobile One HSV Commodore of James Courtney. 
Now, Shane Van Gisbergen, what's he do? He'll have to dive down the inside here also. Oh, and there's going to be contact with Dave Reynolds and Cam Waters very close. And they won't tolerate at Red Bull Van Gisbergen being buried in this pack for too long. So half a chance you'll see them pluck him out if they feel as though he's being hurt strategically here. Exactly. So he's down in seven. So McLaughlin, Winkup, Winterbottom, Mostert, Waters, Reynolds, Van Gisbergen, Perkat, Caruso, Holdsworth. That's your ten. I don't know what they've done with the door on Holdsworth's car because that was open before. It's hard to fix that when you're driving along. So 13-3 for Coulthard, fastest lap of the race. Meantime, in the Nissan garage, the work continues to try and get the snout of that car back in shape. It's going to be there for a while. So two cars parked up in Courtney and Todd Kelly. Big damage on Garth Tander's car. Looks like there's been a shark attack on Tim Slade's car. It's been gnawed on both ends. And now McLaughlin, with clean air, is beginning to apply speed. So he's done very fast sector splits. Replay of the start. You saw what great traction conversion Jamie Wincup had. Left away beautifully. Now, Mostert at this point's position three, but he tried to go up around the outside and then Cam Waters made it three wide. That didn't work for them because Frosty gets up the inside. I can't work out what's happened to Fabian there. Do you from, see the, from the inside, there's contact from the inside. So we're on board now with Shane. Shane has the big lunge. Massive lunge. He actually didn't get a very good jump, but he tried to make it all up in the braking area. So Percat and Reynolds both round him up. So they got nice starts. The guys in the pro drive cars actually did a really good job. They've all moved over to the right, but watch this. He's cleared the brake and he's fired down there. Now he makes contact, bang. And then right in behind was Lee Holdsworth and Fabian. So it still really hasn't cleared up how that contact's made. Have a close look. Look for Fabian. He's in behind Van Gisbergen. Who gets him? Who gets him? Is it Slade? Yeah, he got... Ah, right. So Tander, Slade into and Fabian Todd. and Todd. So it's hard to work out the sequencing, though, because it was all happening behind them, uh, the, the net effect. And here's the replay of the pass for the lead down the final corner here. And this was beautifully executed by McLaughlin. The trail braking, meaning applying the brake, turning the steering wheel without the inside front tyre locking in the process was very impressive. This is coming out of the hairpin looking now from Jamie's perspective on the rear bumper of the Red Bull Holden Racing Team car, down the inside, the dirty side of the racetrack where there's less grip available and not even a puff of blue smoke. He did that beautifully. That was a very nice manoeuvre. But watch this, he sort of half faints to the right, then flicks to the left. Very nicely done. And so was it. Great presence of mind for Jamie not to turn in too hard. He didn't turn hard down on him, which gave him enough room to make that move stick. This is a great shot from the Red Rooster cam. There's a bit of a battle for... Pit priority. pit priority here between two guys that are in the same pit bay, Will Davison and Craig Lowndes. They're currently down in 16th and 17th. 0.9 of a second is the margin between McLaughlin and Wincup at the moment. So Scott cleared Wincup, but he hasn't cleared away. So they're basically shadowing each other for pace at the moment. Just worth keeping an eye on their pace. We're on lap 6 of 70. Remember, we're talking in the Hino Hub about the potential for the first round of stops for some players to be in the mid-teens. Depending on who you're racing and whether or not you're being held up, some may go a little earlier or a little later. Lounds on the back of Will Davison. This is turn 11. And these guys are battling for 16th and 17th. Well, James Courtney's hoping to get uh, the Boost Mobile entry back out there. A lot of work going on the front, mate. You're just in the middle of uh, not being able to avoid anything there. No, mate. Look at range of fours, mate. So, uh... I got a good start, got past Scotty, I oh, jumped a row, and then, yeah, all hell broke loose down at Turn 1, and I was jammed between cars, couldn't do anything, so, uh, yeah, disappointing. Uh, feels like it's uh, got uh, been suspension or steering. Yeah, quite a bit of damage to the front and right. Uh, Slady came over with quite a force. Uh, I don't know what happened around him, but, yeah, it's uh, not healthy. Boys are working on getting it back out there. Thanks. Cheers, mate. And they have moved into position for an unscheduled pit stop at Preston Hire Racing for Lee Holdsworth. They believe there was contact from Fabian Coulthard's wing that has damaged the door on Lee Holdsworth's car, and the officials won't allow that. It won't shut properly. They need to get that door sealed, so they're going to bring him in. That's been noted now by race control. It's up on the timing monitor at the moment, so mechanical black flag for Lee Holdsworth for them to rectify that. Coulthard, you may have caught a shot there of him a moment ago, just acknowledging Alex Rulo, who gave him some space and allowed him to move up a spot. There is Lee Holdsworth. Scapey asked the question a little earlier, how did that rectify itself? 
Well, it hasn't entirely, and that's the reason why he's now touring the pit lane. Right rear door on the Preston Hire entry needs to be dealt with. Former pole sitter at this location. So he's come out of a great position, unfortunately, in the top ten. And this might not be that easily fixed because it's punched a, a, a fair dent. The back of that car's got it. And so it's, see how much damage it's done. It's actually pulled the whole door mechanism up. So what they do in that case is they just put slabs of tape on it. Go, go, go. This might not hurt him too badly. You only just a little bit early based on everyone coming in roughly 15 laps. So he's the speed lane. A chunk of fuel just means he's got to do a long stint on tyres. Right front guard on Garth Panda's car's seen better days. It's waving to the crowd as well. So Garth at the moment is in 10th position. He's also in 10th position in the championship. He's got a little bit of a margin with Michael Caruso further down the road. And tucked in behind here is Scott Pine, 11th, James Moffat, Rick Kelly, Dale Wood. That margin remains the same between McLaughlin and Wind Cup at the moment. 1.1 seconds with Frosty still in third position. So just want to keep an eye on the lap speed between McLaughlin and, and Wind Cup, Mark, because their last lap through was a 1 minute 13.52 and 5.8 respectively. Yeah, so there's nothing well. in it. So Wind Cup's able to shadow here, literally. And he's only a second away. So it was a great opportunistic move by Scott, very effectively done early in the race, but he's either not stretching it too much at the moment or Wind Cup has got genuinely good pace in that car. They both look very settled on the road. So this is going to boil down to a fascinating little strategy battle of how much either of these teams take in their first stop and how much do they decide to run the tyres or do you go with the old time on tradition of do whatever the leader does and figure it out in the second stop. <laughs> go with the leader. Yeah, exactly. And I think the other one you can't discount is Mark Winterbottom. He's been very strong on the last lap when they did 13.5s, he did a 13.6. So it's still got very good pace. So's Mostert just in behind. In fact, he was the third fastest car on the last lap. Remember, heat effect is a big deal on street circuits like this where the ambient temperature is up and the track surface tempers up as well. If you're two or three or four cars deep in the queue, you're sucking in all the hot air into the engine induction, into the brake system. It makes the job that is hard even harder. There's our current series leader, Fabian Coulthard, who's winding his way through the field. This is this is Lowndes. Opening lap, and just see how chaotic it is. It's because it's so wide and because it's so difficult to get the car stopped. And there's all the damage. You can see the smoke coming off James Courtney's car already. You can see Garth Tander's car with huge damage. They're all still bumping into each other. That's, that's actually Moffat there. So they're all running into each other, and it is just one of the most hectic oh. things in motorsport. He almost put him in the fence, actually. They, they actually touched. There's a squeeze on the run down there. So they're all recovering from all the things that have happened previously as well, trying to figure out where the steering is centred, trying to understand who you're racing and what's going on as they wheel Todd Kelly back out now. Lost a pile of time. So a lot of open-heart surgery on the front of that car to get it back in shape. What a shame. Great pace yesterday. At one stage, he ended up P2. Yeah. Now Van Gisbergen trying to unlatch himself from David Reynolds in the final corner. These fellas are battling for sixth and seventh at the moment. David's got the inside running. For Shane to make this work, he's got to go around the outside at turn one, and then he's got to do the same at two, or he's got to pull back down and crisscross him. Slightly awkwardly positioned there. The crisscross is hard to affect from that position, but that's what he's trying. Probably stay down a little bit too long on the outside. But it's a great battle going on with these guys. And here he comes now. This time he gets it done at three. And Gisberg, a nice work. He's got pace in that car. And they'll be very carefully monitoring the effects of racing at the moment and whether it impacts the strategy of the Red Bull Holden racing team. So he's up now to sixth. Next in the queue is Cam Waters. And that's about three seconds, the gap between those two drivers. One point six seconds, McLaughlin over Wind Cup. Van Gisbergen having just cleared David Reynolds for sixth, so it's McLaughlin, Wind Cup, Winterbottom, Mostert, then Waters, Van Gis, followed by Reynolds, Percat, Caruso, and Garth Tander with the damage on that car. And if you're the leader, 
Do you actually play the game to bring them in early with you? If you've got the best tyre life, bring them onto your plan. This is the replay of Shane Van Gisbergen on the run to turn three. So he tried the crisscross to get it done at two, but it might have been that he was always setting up for three because he turned in from very wide at turn two. Did a beautiful job of getting through on the inside of three cleanly. Ryan Storey shortening his nails. Paul, Paul Murray on the left. <laughs> He's a mad car racing fan. And there's no known cure. That's right, you can't fix that. The exhaust fumes have got him. That's right. <laughs> Will Davison's in Woodstock entry, new livery on the car this weekend. He's out of 21st position here. Member shares the boom with Craig Lowndes. And they're making sure that those two are separated. Lap 12, Courtney rolling back with tape all over the front of that car together with Todd Kelly. So the two cars that were parked up for a while have got out there. Points are vital at the back end of the championship. So Paul Davison makes his first stop. Probably not far away Lowndes and, and most of the field, as you said in the Hino Harbour, going to be in the mid to late teens. He's grabbed about 50 litres of fuel, Will Davison. Wonderful shot at turn one. But remember, the sun's beating right into the eyes of the drivers down here, and they're going in and out of those shadows as the afternoon wears on. Show you the gaps between your favourite drivers here. McLaughlin, Wind Cup, Winterbottom, Mostert, then Waters. That's Van Gisbergen. and he's cleared Reynolds now. Nick Perkett's nicely positioned from Michael Caruso, Garth Panda, Scott Pye, James Moffat, Rick Kelly, Craig Lowndes. Lowndes is 14. Then Dale Wood having a good run from Tim Blanchard. There's Coulthard. That's important. He's 17. Tim Slade out of sequence, Simone Di Silvestro, Aaron Russell and his teammate Alex Rulo having a battle there in the Lucas Umbrell cars. Everybody else behind them has been into the pit lane. Holdsworth, Davison, Slade, Bright, Kelly and Courtney all been wounded in some form or another and for Davison it was just a strategic stop. McLaughlin, 1.5 second lead. One of the intriguing parts of this next four or five laps will be A, when they stop, and B, what they choose to do in terms of big front lock there, only just stays on the black stuff. Alex Rulo, left-hand front wheel locked, and how much fuel they put in, and remembering that they've still got to put another dose of fuel in for the second stop. So if you short fill the early bit, you have a longer parked up time, a longer standing still time at the second stop. So. Sometimes it's better to take your medicine at the start, but you lose track position as a, as a consequence. That and strategy will be interesting. And history shows that good tyre quality and the shortest standstill time at the end of this is pretty beneficial. Of course, going to be on your toes in case you get a safety car and the high probability here. He's battling to pull it up down there. He's going to drill his teammate then. He always picks him up that he was, he was battling to stop. It's a great shot from the rear of the Lucas Del Dumbrell Motorsport Commodore, but it was it was locked up and he was looking like he was just going to fire straight to the back of Aaron Russell's car. He finally got it pulled up. He actually just took a little bit of evasive action. He just turned it into the corner a little bit late. And now he's dropped off the back of the other car. And they're going to pull Scott Pye in early in car number two out of position 11. So he's got... Uh, Garth Tanner and James Moffat around him, and Cam Waters is now in as well. Replay down the end here, watching Alex Rulo when he was battling to pull up. He actually had the fronts well and truly locked down there. He had two bites at it, two stabs at the brake pedal, and then true Maxwell Smart style missed him by that much. Here we go. Cam Waters, so the first of the front runners. Behind is one of the Red Bull cars too. Or was it Pi? Sorry, it was Pi. So, how much did he take on? Get some numbers for you as these stops evolve. So the Cam Waters was 45 litres of fuel. We're watching Scott Pi now. He'll get a little bit of a benefit here for some clean air if he feeds out in the gap. And the team's monitor that carefully on the telemetry. And look at that in the garage. So he has dropped in. He'll be in front of Will Davison here. And he's got a nice big dose of fresh air just in front. 
So in the case of Scott Pye, took near enough to 60 litres. So of those that have come in so far, uh, James Courtney, who obviously had damage early on, Scott Pye have taken the most amount of fuel. Mostert now in. You have a clear run in. Not before BOC, through DJR. Give you four bags of fuel. spots nicely and that's critical for the hose and gun positioning and they don't have to reach yeah, too far for wheels. Yeah. It's running in there at three and three quarter oh. litres per second in the refuelling and often done cleanly. Didn't look like he stationary for a huge amount of time so he hasn't taken a big pile of fuel. We'll get a number for you in just a tick. So all four tyres and only 38 litres of fuel for Mostert. So my woman's intuition was right. It wasn't uh, a hugely long period of time so they're playing for track position there trying to close up the margin that means a big standstill time later on it does a gap now you can just see there 2.2 between the bottle and wink up 2.9 almost 2.9 back to winter bottom there gisberg and further five and a half seconds so all of the poa cars now pretty much line of stern doing their stocks and as you said there's a big difference between Cam Waters and Mostert, which will only be, in terms of stop time, only about three seconds when he gets to the next stop. The mark went bottom on the marks. They got the fuel hose in very, very quickly on that. He's got a little bit of damage at the back there, too. He doesn't seem to be too much of an issue. No changes for car. Five for Mark Winterbottom. He's away pretty cleanly. I'll check the fuel and see if it's the same as what you guys get, but uh, nice stop there. Yeah, it did look like he sat still for very long either, so they clearly they've got a plan and pro drive. And so it's only 40 litres for Frosty, two more than his teammate. And there they are. They're going to be absolutely line astern in their little battle. That shuffles Van Gisbergen up behind his teammate into third, so it's McLaughlin over Wing Cup at the moment, then Van Gisbergen. Percat's still out there, Caruso, Tander. So you go all the way back to Mark Winterbottom, the first car in the field that's taken the stop, and he's 15th, so roughly half the field have taken the first opportunity for a dose of shell racing fuel. Rusty? Just on your point, Crompo, about the relatively short stops, I've just wandered in and spoken to Adam DeBore, engineer for Chas Mostert. I said, in a perfect world, would you have liked to have stopped Chas longer? He shook his head and said, no, this is their plan. Short run for now. Scenario: The one that's really interesting. If I was Van Gisbergen and Grant McPherson now, I'd bring him in because if the safety car comes out, Van Gisbergen will be smashed for that. Mm. So you're better off now to take your medicine, come in early. You haven't got pit priority. Come in and do it. Oh, that was, that was close down there at 11, wasn't it? Between the teammates. Meantime, Mostert and Winterbottom both showing very good sector splits out there with a new dose of fuel, not a lot of it, but also fresh tyres. Chaz way off the apex of the corner, right in behind him. So that little rub back at 11. Moffat and uh, Di Silvestro have come in as well. So James Moffat in 34, Simona in car number 78. And a big, big lock up here for Jason Bright. He's had to go straight ahead in the runoff road. That's down at seven and eight where there's an artificial chicane so you don't gain an advantage when you do run wide. And here's the thing that made us gasp for just a moment because Chad had a bit of a look. He did touch him, but he, he managed to get his nose out of there so that there wasn't really any effect. Mark Winterbottom, well, I'm sure that somewhere up in northwestern Victoria, Tim Edwards is watching this, the CEO of ProDrive. He'll be holding his breath when he sees this as well, but he knows he's got good boys on the job. And they just have... It's just a little love bite. So just a tiny little tap. Caruso's come in. Car number 23, here he is at the pit lane entry. So he's been steadily making a bit of ground with this car. And Steve Todkill have been an item as driver and engineer successfully for a long time. He reckons he's been just a little bit behind the play in recent races, battling, in his words, way too much understeer. They found an issue at the back end of practice too that they think help cure some of their ills and they're certainly showing good race pace at the moment. This is Dale Wood, second of the Erebus entries in GB Galvanising and did he jump him in the stop? Ooh, the camera angle close. made it look like they're about to <laughs> make contact but Michael prevails there. 2.6 seconds so McLaughlin's just opening up ever so slightly over Wink at the is. moment and here he is, he's in. He's got a little cushion. How much fuel do they stick in the Shell V Power Racing entry? 
goes without saying, this has got to be a perfect stop. Right, honey, he's got a vision on you there. We've got you for four times. And 13 and a half seconds worth of fuel. So, 13 and a half seconds. Uh, front there, number looks good. Nice and hard in the box for his mate. It's going to be about 40 to 50 odd litres of fuel. Pearl's all the wheels are done. Pearl's all the wheels are done. Just waiting on the fuel. Got a GRM car. Oh, halfway down the pit lane. Yeah, all good, all good. All clear. All clear, mate. Nice job. No one's been too thirsty in the first stop, have they? No one's done exactly what we showed in the Hino Hub, which is just go for that little extra dose on stop one and maybe make it 60 or more litres for the slightly shorter one later on. I mean, a, a couple have pied it, but he couldn't do it anyway, no. because he, he, he's going to be smashed by the next blokes. So they've actually ran as much, they put as much fuel in as they could without losing track position. And mindful of, that's right, of wind cups. So they're playing to the opponent as well. Gee, that looks ugly, doesn't it, on Garth Tander's car? So he's in, out, and done. First stop for Garth Tander. What's going to be really interesting is this. So where do the guys land with this car? This is actually the, the most pivotal part so far of this race. The start was important, but McLaughlin got by. Where, what did they do with him? Now, Frosty may well jump Jamie here because yeah. they came in with that car, didn't put a lot of fuel in it. They had to put 38, 40 odd litres of fuel and they're on good tyres. He'll have had more lap speed and he's punching out good numbers. McLaughlin, by the way, has done the fastest lap now on a 13 1. Murph? Yeah, watching them come in, 88 comes and sits on the marks nicely. Fuel goes in quickly, as you said, boys. It was 13 seconds, I think, or 13 and a half for Scott McLaughlin. You'd have to think this is going to be slightly less, wouldn't you, to squeeze in between where McLaughlin is and, I think, Mark Winterbottom. So, your count's probably been the mighty's away. No changes for car 88. They're gone, Murph. They're, those guys no, have driven gone. by. They've so, just driven by. Well, they put 10 litres more in on our numbers in Jamie's car. So 50 litres for Scott, 60 litres for Wincup. So there is what we just spoke about a few moments ago. At Red Bull, they have dosed up more on the first stop. Now, that's interesting. And Van Gisbergen now leads from Percat and Lowndes Coulthard, position number four. So the job for Wincup now is to work himself and the tyres hard enough to get right to the back of what will be Cam Waters. He's actually, sorry, he's in front of Waters. He's got to get to Mostert. So if he gets to Mostert, he'll stop for less time. And that's him up the road. Yep. So that's the bait. I wouldn't mind just sitting here and eavesdropping a bit with Jamie to watch the behaviour of the car and also see how busy he is with the various controls. You're making brake bias adjustments. Oh, big lock up here for Chaz. Was that Chaz that went straight ahead or who was that? Was that one of the oh, low? OK, one of the LDM cars. Yeah. Wow, that was a big lock up. They're the sort of things you've got to contend with. It's going on all around. Anyway, let's just ride here with Jamie, get a bit of a feeling for the behaviour of the car. But we've got a bit of an understanding. Jamie's car's well balanced. He's not stabbing at the steering wheel. We'll have a look at McLaughlin soon as well. Lowndes is now the leader. That's Percat and Blanchard's in too. They're making a change on Shane's car. Either putting in or taking out some preload in the rear of the car. Yeah, you picked it there, Crompo. That was a right height change for the 97. You can see them getting that done. I'll have a check on the fuel. You probably have your number, and I'll. Uh, it's very similar to Jamie Wincup's on mine. Probably, we'd say 60 litres. Yeah, our computer's showing 55, so we'll split the diff and call it 58 between us. <laughs> 
and Wing Cup with 63. Craig Lowndes is the leader. He's got a six and a half second margin over Fabian Coulthard. They'll run Fabian a bit longer now in this sequence. Lowndes is now in. That leaves Coulthard in the lead. Keep an eye on Coulthard's pace. We look at him on the corrected order here and see whether or not he's recovering. Not nice and square on the bottom. Only really recovered it to 16th based on those numbers now, but that'll improve as the rest of the race goes on in terms of his pace. A little bit over the mark there for Craig by two or three hundred mil. There's not much in him. McLaughlin. He's got a 2.6 second lead over Winterbottom. Only half a second back to Mostert, so Mostert right in behind. That was 45 litres for Lowndes in the Team Vortex Holden Commodore for Triple Eight Race Engineering. So the only car out there that hasn't done of the lead group, its stop is car number 12, Fabian Coulthard. I don't think Alex Rulo has stopped either. He's 10th at the moment. So there's a couple of cars yet to take their fuel. timing at the moment we're showing Fabian Coulthard hovering somewhere around about 16, 17, 18 and now he takes his stop so he's got car pace there could be a recovery but it's going to be a pretty tough afternoon and this will swing the championship Nothing too crazy. The front here, lads. Got a bit of work on the front bar. You just give that corner and push there, Chris. The right rear, right side. You see that push? Feel strong there. Okay. All the wheels are done. I've got that corner going at the moment here, mate. So we've got Lance's out. Pretty good to go. There's nothing in pit lane. Quite more on the rear part. Oh, clear. Oh, clear. So they took the opportunity to put a lot of fuel on for Fabian Coulthard. The reality of a championship with 26 races in it is you're going to have down days. The trick is, what can you yield out of that? And that's what they'll be concentrating on now. Mitigating the risk, trying to figure out a way of getting the most they can out of a tough situation to come away with some points, knowing that everybody in the field at some stage will have one of those days. For sure, and the Saturday of Darwin was Van Gisbergen's dud day. The Saturday for Chas Mostert at Winton was a dud day. So there's going to be times when you just either don't get a result based on your car performance or circumstance, or you have some mechanical failure which impacts on the way your championship evolves. Very, very difficult to make sure from a consistency standpoint you get through the year with minimal drama. 45 laps remaining. Red Rooster Chopper Cam. Shadows are beginning to lengthen in Townsville. Hope you're enjoying our supercar afternoon situation at the moment is just under three seconds between Scott McLaughlin and Mark Winterbottom and that's an Alex Rulo Dunlop super soft tyre inside of edge if that one doesn't look too flash does it and now we've got a problem here for Nick Perkat who's just had his stop a few moments ago he's hit the wall he's he's the wall uh, looks like you got a broken left front upright mate looks like you got something broken in the left front corner and he was running quite strongly so new colours and backing this weekend from McKitch on that car so he's trying to go up around the outside here of Will Davis, and he's on the grey. And that's the reason why it's broken. Big, heavy contact with the wall. Uh, it's lucky mistimed. Maybe he thought Will was coming in, but Will's already done his stop, so he mistimed this run. It was always too wide. Never looked like making the car stay on the black stuff there. It got to the grey on the outside and just run out of grip. And it's made heavy contact. That left front has really hurt. In fact, the left rear will also be fairly hurt when they get back to the pit too, because it actually pushed the car or hit the car up into the air once that contact was made. Now we make reference earlier about the potential thrilling battle between Wind Cup and Mostert. It's on. Third and fourth, here they are. These fellas just over five seconds from the lead. That's being held by Scott McLaughlin at the moment. And Mark Winterbottom. So said this several times during the weekend, but it's 
refreshing to have Winterbottom having sorted out a sweet spot in that car to be back in the mix here. So he's only 3.2 seconds away, and that was as a benefit from the short field for his stock. He took 45 litres, McLaughlin took 50, Wincup took 60. Now, Wincup doesn't look too bad, does he? On the corrected numbers, he's very close to McLaughlin, but he can't afford to be bottled up for long, or that little mathematic equation will begin to hurt. So, it's pretty obvious, but he, he knows he's got to clear him, and that's what's in his mind at the moment. He's done nice it easily. Move. In fact, Chaz just surrendered very early there. White flag went up. Excellent run. Nice work. Nice forward. Now, this really puts Wincup in the game here because he's got an extra 10 litres of fuel in hand over McLaughlin, and now he's got a bit of fresh air to play with as well. That's uh, two seconds of it before he may or may not get to Winterbottom, but just being able to do his own thing to his own rhythm will be handy here. We'll watch his lap speed very carefully. How's their form for absolute lap speed, meaning the fastest laps they've done? 13.12 for McLaughlin. 13.29 for Winkup, 13.28 for Mostert, 13.35 for Winterbottom. Absolutely nothing in it. 13.3 for Fabian. So it's a very, very tight tussle in terms of... That wasn't that to happen. off the jack? It has, I think. Yeah. They're going to obviously just uh, take that back into the garage, so... Jason Bright here, and uh, well, this was all a bit messy, and that was uh, basically rounding up the stricken Nick Percat car, and that was a pretty small gap. So they're using Gojax now to just get this car rotated, turn it back, get it into the garage and go to work on it. I'd be surprised if they get it back out this afternoon and uh, make sure that it's ready for tomorrow. So here's Wind Cup now. So his best lap of 13.2, his last lap of 13.7. The reason I make reference to the time is Winterbottom and McLaughlin were in the low 14s. Jamie's got good pace. He's got 10 litres in hand more than the leader, which converts to somewhere between about two and three seconds in hand at the next stop. And if he continues on the current march, he looks pretty handy for the latter part of the day. Yeah, Bob, I'm uh, with Mark Dutton quickly, showing some very good pace in the eight out you guys chose to throw some extra fuel and obviously confident Jamie was confident you had some card speed to make up a bit of ground when you were behind these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couchy's worked pretty hard with Jamie on the tyre life, so we're trying to exploit that. Uh, in the first stint, we, we weren't totally confident we had it on them, uh, but right now the pace is up. Uh, we don't know if they're conserving or not, though, so, um, yeah, we can control what we can control. It's a few seconds in hand with the fuel that you guys put in, though. Yeah, there should be about two and a half, possibly three seconds. So um, it's enough, but you, you've got to close up that gap to be able to use it. Looks like you're doing a pretty good job. Cheers, mate. Part of that equation involves dealing with Mark Winterbottom, who's also got pace. But remember, Frosty's got to put a much bigger load of fuel on for the second stop in the bottle of Ford Falcon. It's a great battle. Three seconds the margin. That's the margin between McLaughlin, Winterbottom, Win Cup. And look at that. Well, Todd Kelly can't take a break, can he? Big damage on the right front corner of that car, and that'll be as a result of the earlier damage and the disturbance to the geometry on the front of that car. So when you've had that sort of damage, Neil, sorry, when you've had that sort of damage, you're almost better off to park it and make sure it's fixed, aren't you? Yeah, because he's already many, he's many gone. laps out of the yeah. game. He's just trying to get some points, but uh, deep frustration for him. So 3.38 seconds, McLaughlin over Winterbottom, and then it's another 1.2 back to Win Cup. Keep an eye on that number. And then Mostert, Waters, Van Giers. Followed then by Reynolds, Holdsworth, Pye, and Moffat in the 10. Second week in a row, second event in a row, I should say, for James Moffat, where he's had good pace. Now, Lowndes and Rick Kelly are at it, 11th and 12th in their position. Rick said to me earlier in the day, every time you look at Lowndes when he's been buried in the pack and he's qualified poorly, he manages to race well and recover. So he said, I'm just going to race with him all day. So looking at him now, that's exactly what he's doing. He's just got, sitting there with Craig, echo what he's doing. And those guys are actually making some genuine progress into the field. Well, they've, they've actually made real numbers, haven't they? Holdsworth's up four spots, Moffat's up seven, Lowndes up eight, Rick up six. 
Coulthard down nine. Not bad for Lee Holdsworth, given that uh, we were worried about the implications of the opening door that had to be taped up. But they took their stop, taped up the door, and I think you made the point at the time, Mark, that they could probably get away with that. It was just an early stop, made for a long run on those tyres. Didn't really hurt. Fairly intense battle here between Scott Pye, James Moffat and Craig Lowndes. There's your gaps, there's Wincup closing the gap. 3.2.6. So he's got that down now to 0.6 of a second. Remember I asked you to hold the thought a minute ago on the margin. I did. He's a good boy. Extra little something for you tonight. Here's the boys inside the garage. Triple Eight Race Engineering at Team Vortex. Lance having a go. Good, good brake stability, hasn't he? He's gone straight down the inside of James Moffat. Did it nicely. Well done. Up another spot, that's 10th now for Craig Lowndes. So he's point-to-point -point racing just as it was in Darwin and many, many times before. Fantastic for Lowndes. He's now only 28 seconds from the lead of the race. On the current numbers for Lowndes, he's probably going to make some more spots here with consistency. This is the focus battle, though. Win Cup on Winterbottom. And that's a familiar phrase in supercars racing, but not in the recent past. Now, the thing is, does Jamie have enough in hand now to be able to do something about the Botlow car? One of the spots might be down here at 11, but to do that, he's got to be close. And he didn't come out of turn eight strongly enough then to be able to achieve that. Gee, he's got some, the, the brake carrying capacity and the turn in under brakes was very impressive there for Wincup. He made massive ground, didn't he? He certainly did. He always had a bit of a look, didn't he? So, here we go. And Ludo's on the oh, phone to Great McLaughlin. And so is David Couchy on the phone to Jamie Wincup. Both encouraging these guys to do their very best. And can he get down the inside? A big, big, big move! Big move! Nicely done. Does Frosty do the crisscross? Yes, he does. He doesn't come off there well enough. That's a great manoeuvre. Jamie Winkup, superb performance. Well executed. This race is on. Fantastic driving for Jamie Winkup. We threw up the question as to whether or not he had enough pace in hand to be able to clear Mark Winterbottom. And he's emphatically answered that with a big yes. The way that car's behaving under brakes, the trail braking and the turn in while using the brake with car number 88, the Red Bull Holt Racing Team car is really impressive. And they chase these cars through practice and in qualifying, trying to seek the most out of them. So the Red Rooster chopper cam shows the story. Was he up far enough? We thought, yeah, 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 maybe. And then he got it done. And was the crisscross on? Great exit speed for Mark Winterbottom, but in the end, Jamie held on. That was a very impressive run. Straight down the inside, cleared him nicely. Respect for both drivers between the two of them. And popped out the other side with a place change. So now it's 5.6 seconds between McLaughlin and Wincup, knowing that there's a two and a half to three second difference in their fuel loads in favor of Jamie Wincup, which means that in net terms at the moment, there might theoretically be a couple of seconds between them. Meantime, Van Gisbergen is also making very good use of the trail braking capacity in his Red Bull Holden Racing Team car as he slices down the inside of the final corner on Cam Waters. So they've got those cars working well in an area where you do get a yield. No doubt about that. So, McLaughlin with 5.6 seconds over Wing Cup. One second back to Winterbottom. 3.2 seconds back to Mostert. 5.9 seconds back to Van Giersbergen. That's your battle as your race predictor. And it's going to be very tight based on those fuel consumptions and the stop time around the McLaughlin Win Cup next visit to the pit area. So both Win Cup and Van Gisbergen were hubbed much more to our blue strategy of taking a bit more fuel or as much as they did in that first stop and equalizing the fuel dump or maybe slightly better than for the second stop but pretty much everybody else other than those that that were caught up in other dramas at the early part of the race elected to short fill to begin with which means their standstill for the second stop is going to be longer that's ryan walkinshaw 
the middle. Matty Nielsen, who's currently running the day-to-day -day operations. As we see Scott Pye make a move down the inside of Jason Bright. He's going to be closely followed by Rick Kelly. Just up ahead is Moffat. Lowndes has actually got away from that whole group. He was part of that group before. He's got really good pace. Garth Tanner with all that damage from car 33. The gap to McLaughlin on the last lap actually went out a little bit. It was 5.7. It may, may have been traffic affected. It's that beautiful curb cam shot we've got for you at turn six. Roughly 140 k as the cars launch over there. So I wanted to have a look over the shoulder of Scott McLaughlin. We, we eavesdropped earlier on Jamie Wincup. He's the guy that he's racing. Let's see what the Shell V-Power Racing Falcon's behaving like. between both McLaughlin and Wincup, 14-3 apiece. Almost inseparable for lap speed. Dick Johnson, legend of the sport watching. But uh, we had a private conversation while we were looking at all that about how silky smooth the upshifts were for Scott McLaughlin. So when you're in a business where a hundredth of a second makes the difference, the sum of all parts is what gives you the lap speed, the consistency and the, con you know, the, the incredible pace that these top end of town teams and drivers show. So micromanaging all that sort of stuff where you don't drop a tiny bit of time on every gear change by bumping the rev limiter or, or pulling it too early. But, but they were, and it was the same with Wind Cup, but they were very impressive upshifts as well. Certainly were, but even the rate, it's always a good way of looking at how the car's behaving when you watch the guys steering corrections and rate of applying the steering lock. They don't have to correct very quickly. It's very nice, smooth transition. They trail the brake, they keep the momentum up, and both McLaughlin and Winkup, when we were on board with them, looked very impressive. Both cars operating very well. Tander on board here, 13th. That's Rick Kelly in the foreground. Now, remember in the Hino Hub earlier on, I said big rhythm change from event to event. We've been heavily engaged in super sprint racing lately. This weekend, super street racing, two 200 kilometer races. Right about now, you look up on the timing screen, whether you're a driver, an engineer, or someone affiliated with the team, 33 laps remaining. It's a long, hot, hard afternoon. And when you've been doing the shorter races on the Saturdays, it suddenly becomes a reminder that there's a mission involved in trying to deal with this. So the gap, first to second at the moment, remains 6.5 seconds. McLaughlin over Wind Cup. Still 3.1 seconds back to Winterbottom. And on corrective, we're still looking despite the fuel load differences between the two leaders, at about two to three seconds between them when they correct, that's assuming a clean pit stop. And when you did the lap times on the previous one, it was a 14.3 for both Wink Cup and McLaughlin. On the next lap, it was a 14.41 each. So they just cannot be separated in terms of their current pace. The thing that's going to separate them is less time for the next pit stop for Jamie Wink Cup. He'll gain roughly two and a half to three seconds but that's still three to three and a half seconds away from McLaughlin. So again, the last closing phase of the race, he's got to make lap speed. There's no substitute at the moment for outright lap speed. I get the sense that his initial run on the tyres for the first 10 or 15 laps looks a little stronger, and then it just, he's eating into them a little bit. We'll see whether that is a truism or not. But the, 
pace of the Red Bull car and the way in which it was able to trail break and get at that final quarter was pretty impressive when he was making ground. The other thing that all those numbers assume is a picture-perfect stop and no traffic effect. That assumes that nobody fumbles a gun, gets the wheels on cleanly, you get a clean run in and out of the lane. Look at wheel gas up out of the final corner here. Simona Di Silvestro tucked behind. Got a bit of push in the error. 17 and 18. But remember, Neil, it was probably a lot to do with Wing Cup's early pace after the pit stop because he had to make ground. He had to go and attack Mostert, which he did. He had to go and attack Winterbottom. So those two things will have hurt the tyre. It'll be diminishing returns later in the run. So McLaughlin hasn't had that level of pressure. He's been able to consistently apply himself across that phase of the race. Last lap through for the boys, but Scotty McLaughlin was a 14-4. And for Wing Cup, it was a 14-5. 6.7 seconds is the margin. I just heard Sneaky Ludo comment. He's got five laps to go before he comes in. Just wanted to clear up Todd Kelly for you guys. The, uh, the boat sails Nissan Altima has been in the wars today, as you know, after that early race incident when they brought the car in to initially uh, repair the damage. The front bar was quite badly bent. They threw on a new front splitter, but one of our cameramen spotted that the bodywork was rubbing on that right front tire and it eventually let go. We could see that when he came back in the, the second time. So pretty frustrated uh, Todd Kelly. And just on his teammate in Michael Caruso, here it is back in the lane with that damaged right front tire. They in fact had to get uh, one of the, the battery powered saws out to cut into the front splitter to ensure it didn't happen once again. And Michael Caruso, guys, as well, just to let you know, uh, he's 14th at the moment. The stationary time in his first pit stop suggested about 83 litres of fuel. In fact, he only took on 53 litres of fuel. They had a drama with the left rear wheel nut. Oh, thanks. We actually thought he put a huge amount on. We've got it as 80 litres, so well done, Rusty. He won't be amused by that. No, it's hard to gain a tenth of a second out there, let alone hand it all back in a stop that goes wrong. Now, it's interesting here, because they've got a little bit of fuel flexibility with Van Gisbergen now peeling out and in for his final stop of the day, they're switching strategies to more like the even tyre green strategy that we talked about in the Hino Hub. So running them in now to about lap number 41. Square in the box on the mark for us, please. He's looking for an undercut benefit here. Brad McPherson, his engineer. That was perfectly on the marks that time for Van Gisberger. Tear off will be important with the afternoon sun. Yeah, which he just called for and then managed to get it done. Well done. Sorted. Comes out in front of Todd Kelly, who's many laps down, 15 laps down on the leaders. So they've now delivered all of their 120 litres of Shell Racing fuel. Just hearing that Chaz's pit team was all set up. They went out and set up and they come back in. Van Gisbergen does come in. So did they get sold the dummy or not? And now all of a sudden, here comes well, both Mark the PRA cars, so both Winterbottom and Mostert are now in. They've been shadowing each other, but expect them to take quite a bit of fuel on because they took in the region of 40 litres in their first stop, therefore about 80 apiece. Remember, they've got two race entitlement contracts, so they're separated in the lane. Rod Nash Racing and Pro Drive Racing Australia. Moffat's having a continued good run. He is having a good run. 55 versus 97. Mostert versus Van Gisbergen is the story to this exit. It's going to be close. No, 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 no. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Is there a difference between three goes and one go? There's a difference in the vigour of the goes between the two teams. Here we go. Now you're into it. Oh, no, I just used it. <laughs> no, he's got it. So, actually, Van Gisberg is going to be quite close to Frosty. Yeah. So the undercut was a benefit there, and he's got pretty good speed. McLaughlin's now got 7.1 seconds over this man's teammate, Jamie Wincup. Will Davison's come in in car number 19 for Woodstock. Remember, they tweaked this car in that earlier stop as Cam Waters and David Reynolds come in out of third and fourth. There's David in the background.
word that I've just heard is that they may have a flat tyre with car number 19. Not may, they definitely have. It's shredded, torn apart. Right rear corner of Wilbur's car doesn't look too flat. Now Cam Waters in here as well in the Monster Energy Ford Falcon. The GRM car going to be coming down our bow. Hopefully you uh, uh, he should be gone by the time he's ready to go. Two seconds yet, mate. Garth Panda. David Reynolds, five seconds. He's in now for his final stop. As David Three Reynolds seconds. is dispatched, and here comes the race leader. Here we go. Remember, there's a fuel difference between them. So last time in green. for this guy, green tyres. They were the ones that he saved out of quali by stepping out early when he had a two-tenths margin. They'll be handy. And Wind Cup Shadows, this is on. Ten litres difference. About two to three seconds difference in fuel loads in favour of Wind Cup here. Battle of the teams. Battle of the drivers. Good tyre quality for McLaughlin. And Wind Cup said to Wind Cup, Wind Cup said to go around the outside of Craig Lowndes as Pitt, who was coming in as well. They're making a change to Jamie's car. They're going in there. They're putting a spacer in, I think, on the platform there. It looks like a, or a right height change. It's very difficult to see. Tyres are going on. Remember, there's a couple of seconds difference, but McLaughlin's way gone, fellas. Way gone. And he's away. That uh, situation there with um, Will Davison before, too. He had damage on the back of the car at the first stop. I don't think they pulled the bumper far enough away from that back wheel, and it was still rubbing then at the end. They've uh, rectified it this time, but it was fairly costly for Will. Not good. So the margin was seven seconds before the stop between those two, McLaughlin and Wind Cup, as Lowndes gets serviced for the final time today. Scott Pye, Rick Kelly, Dale Wood in as well. It's now eight. So that actually hurt. The Lowndes parked up in front. He had to go around that to get in. So that really hurt. So that wasn't very well orchestrated between the complete Triple Eight outfit. So the gain that they had in terms of fuel in hand, they actually wiped a little bit on the pit entry as a result of one of their own cars, but they did sacrifice some time to tweak it. Yeah. They were making a change to the back. I think Murph said it was a ride height, and they may have put a spacer in there as well. It doesn't look too good at the front of Jason Bright's car, does it? This is all the damage that we're seeing that happened on the first lap of the race. James Moffat was the leader temporarily. He's now come in as well. Leaves Michael Caruso in control of the field. Here he is. We're going to have a look at where your favourite driver's parked in the field at the moment. So the corrected leader is Scott McLaughlin. Two stops done. 120 litres of fuel. Here's the margin back to Jamie Wincup. So has he got any fighting power left or has McLaughlin got him covered? And it's pretty much a similar margin back to Mark Winterbottom. Van Gisbergen, though, has made a genuine gain on Mark Winterbottom. Will Davison in behind, followed by Chaz Mostert. Todd Kelly walking wounded, sadly, in the Nissan Altima car number seven. Then it's David Reynolds and Cam Waters. Tim Slade looks like uh, it's been to the wacky races, damage all over that thing. <laughs> Craig Lowndes, Garth Pander, Lee Holdsworth. I was going to say Paramount Speedway, not the wacky race. It's hard to find a straight panel on it. <laughs> Scotty Pye. <laughs> Followed by the bright, shiny, brand new Nissan Altima of Rick Kelly, Aaron Russell, Alex Rulo, and here's Dale Wood in car number 99. The Simonas come into the lane together with uh, uh, Nick Perkins, obviously, in there as well. So it's 7.4 seconds on the way in to the stop. It's now 8.2 seconds to Wink Cup. But with that little change, can Wink Cup improve the car performance, Rusty? Just a quick update from the lane here. A couple of little things that I've witnessed, Croppo and Scafi. Firstly, Supercar Sporting and Technical Director Dave Stewart went and spoke with Adam DeBore before, just in relation to the tyres for the 55 going out into the lane, then being put back in the garage and the stop being delayed for... Uh eventually happening for, for Mostert. Now, it, I could only just detect a little bit of the conversation. There's no penalty coming, but I reckon there was a bit of a warning in relation to that gamesmanship, that play. And I believe also for Scott McLaughlin, they are green rear tyres. They're not new fronts, but they are green rears on, uh, on McLaughlin's car. And here's a move for Cam Waters down the inside of David Reynolds. Is there going to be space on exit? Often we see trouble here in the little kink on the run to turn three. David hangs on. Cam comes back down the inside, slices down there, gets it done. It's 
not over yet, this little battle. They were two green Dunlop super soft tyres for the back of Scotty's car, Rusty. And yeah, David would have gone down there, swayed the finger a little bit because they don't want the gamesmanship of the gear going in and out of the lane when they're playing strategic and political games. And Dale Wood under investigation for wheel spinning in his pit stop as well. On board now with David Reynolds through turn 10. So right now, pretty much everybody's got pretty good tyre condition, so the run through turn 10 is a wild ride, exciting, but with a 100% flat throttle. Later in the day when the grip goes away, it gets a little bit harder, but the track tip is cooling out. There's the confirmation on screen of the Dale Wood wheel spinning in the stationary stop. Still got uh, 3.4 seconds, McLaughlin over Caruso. Michael still to take his second stop. So just having a look here at the speed of Van Gisbergen. Because remember, they've been making changes to that car. It looks to me like that's got some pretty strong performance in it in the area that counts. Trail braking, getting to the apex of the corner. He's currently in sixth position. He's between the pro drive teammates in Mark Winterbottom and Chaz Mostert. Chaz on the right-hand side of screen. Remember the battle these guys had last year? Awesome. Unbelievable, was it? As good as it gets. Lap after lap. And they were up, down, around and over each other the whole time. There was no paint exchange. Neither one tried to feed the other into the wall. It was a great display of sportsmanship and craftsmanship. Eddie and Annie glued as always. In Red Sock Land, <laughs> otherwise known as Super Cheap Auto Racing. I just heard Ludo say, a bit too fast. Controlling the race then, isn't he? Does that mean that on that green tyre he's concerned about using them up too hard too early? What would you say, Professor Compton? Where'd that come from? Hang on while I pull my pencil out of my plastic lined pocket and I'll give you an answer. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Is there an option C? Would you like an easier question? Yeah, that's right. Give me something <laughs> really simple. <laughs> Data up on screen there for you to check out the difference between Shane Van Gisbergen and Chaz Mostert. In the spot, the Aussie competition, Jamie Winkup is going OK at the moment. He's third, but it's still Kiwi, Kiwi. Yes, I know that. It's bad, isn't it? It's been arcing you up. It winds my clock. I think we're going to have to have an award for the first Australian. Huh? It's a class. It's, a, it's like the old days at Bathurst when we had class racing. Yeah. It's no good. And a big reminder to all the Kiwis Kiwi. watching on the other side of the pond that uh, we would like to enter the country in November because we will be racing at Pukekohe gladly. We love going there and it is fantastic to see the boys doing so well. That's a marble. That's bigger than a That's, marble. Um, it's a basketball, <laughs> that one. <laughs> well, I Thank talked you. about that in the hub as well early in the Hino hub about the amount of debris that'll be likely off the racing line here. That's a factor when you try and make bold moves under or over another car as a big chunk. Uh, so Caruso now takes that second stop that I spoke of. So the order is sorted now. So we've got, as Mark said before, eight seconds. So it's actually gone out in favor of Scott McLaughlin after that last stop sequence. And uh, Fabian Coulthard sitting in third, but yet to take that second stop at the moment. Which means that Mark Winterbottom is actually third from Van Gisbergen. Mostert, Waters, Reynolds, Lowndes, Tander. That'll bring Lee Holdsworth into the 10 when Fabian takes his stop. On correction, Fabian's going to be just outside the 10, assuming that there's not too much of that. It's a nice little moment there for Fabian. Very easy to do, just to overrun turn oh, he's got 7, 8. He got the inside curve, didn't he? Yeah, awkwardly Nasty. too. That really flicked it up into a bad spot. So uh, Jamie Bumpercam gave us the best seat in the house to watch what happened here. He's on board. See what it looks like in his hands. Bang, yeah. Yeah, it's it it sideways. Wasn't it? Yeah. So he's in now for his final stop. We think that he'll feed back out around 12, 13, 14, somewhere in that region. In that line, you've got 20 laps to go. Get that uh, miles from 6 and 8. 6 and 8. And uh, he's looking for a recon mid-exit. Phil Keith. And uh, there's Rick Kelly. So Fabian uh, will drop in just behind Rick, does he? Oh, he might actually hold his ground here. 
They'll argue over it. So he's just completed the stop now, Fabian Coulthard, arguing with Rick Kelly. They're battling for 13th and 14th. Every point counts for the man that started this event as championship leader, but he will lose that championship lead as a result of what happened on lap one, car 12, Shell V Power Racing. Now, car 23, Michael Caruso is also under investigation for wheel spinning in the pit stop, which is a no-no. This will just take half a lap for Fabian to get those tyre pressures and some temperature in so we can sneak away. But there's the provisional points. McLaughlin, 1470. Wink Cup, 18 points away. Remember, Fabian Coulthard come in to this event with a 10-point lead. That's an 84-point swing on today's race. Big ramifications for Fabian Coulthard today. And Scotty's been chipping away at that equation, really in recovery mode since all the way back in Adelaide. And then with all the disasters that everybody endured at both Tasmania and then Phillip Island. So he's been chipping away at that task. Couldn't do it better than with all the armor or poles that he's been achieving. Down the inside goes Coulthard on Jason Bright. Jason gives him a ton of space. But it does show, I know it's always important to be, you know, on pole or near the front of the field, but it does show how important that qualifying is. You park yourself back there in ninth or tenth, and then you're in the zone where everyone does it. It doesn't matter to those other guys. They're not in the championship hunt. So they're firing down the inside, they're making contact. So McLaughlin's qualifying performances have really been the method for his resurgence in the championship. So Ludo was just on the phone to Scotty McLaughlin. Did you pick it up? He's saying, yeah, with subtitles. Yeah. It was basically eight seconds. Go slow, mate. Just keep calm. Yeah, so that's the Australian version. Thank you. 7.45 seconds officially. Jason Bright uh, disintegrates that giant clump of Dunlop super soft rubber. Gisbergen and Moster. I thought Shane might have been able to make a bit more of an impression on Mark Winterbottom. That hasn't really been the case. They actually have a better shot there. You can actually see the margins between them now. Great shot of where they cross Boundary Street. That's the reason for the bump in the road through there, where with grip, they're easy flat. But when the grip comes away, that gets a little more challenging, Rihanna. And just to put a full stop on that investigation for Michael Caruso, the day goes from bad to worse for him. They put their uh, safety stands under the car to do an adjustment for him and had accidentally left one under when they dropped the car. So his wheels were spinning as he'd naturally gone to take off. Um, so, yeah, not, not his fault, but uh, unfortunately we'll probably cop a penalty for that one. Oh, dear. Not a good deal there. So, yeah, they didn't release the jacks correctly. He's dropped the clutch in first gear. And Bad to worse, as you suggested. Thanks for the update, Rihanna. Very frustrating. There's Michael's reaction. He knows how hard it is to be able to get things sorted, to be able to do that, to be able to get a result. But if anything, Mark, I reckon Mostert is starting to apply more pressure to Van Gisberg, and so he is. this actually could go the, the opposite to what, at one stage, we thought could be the possibility. It might actually be shame that's vulnerable here. This is the battle for fourth and fifth. And McLaughlin, who last reported, we gave you the eight second gap, it's now back to 6.7. It was 6.3. The interesting part of that is, is Ludo just coaxing Scott along, driving to a lap time number. I'm sure Wing Cup's not. Wing Cup will be wringing its neck, trying to make the best lap time. So let's give you some numbers. A 14.37 as McLaughlin comes across. On that lap, Wing Cup must have been hurt by traffic there because that's a 14.88. Lost half a second. Winterbottom, a 14.47. Van Gisbergen, a 14.50. A Mostert, 14.54. Very, very close. With Shane Van Gisbergen and the two Pro Drive Racing Australia cars. But as you said, I reckon Mostert looks like he's got better car balance at the moment. The car's flowing really nicely. And of that lead pack, Cam Waters actually did a 14-2. So of the cars in the top 10, he's the speediest at the moment down in sixth place. His speediest to work is now. James Moffat, 14-3-8. So he was very fast on that lap. So the Gary Rogers cars always seem 
in terms of their race pace, like they're much more competitive. They just can't quite get the new tyre qualifying gain that they need to be further towards the front. Remember, Garth Tander got hurt in the championship really badly at Darwin when he went from 6th to 10th based on the did not finish in the Saturday event with Shea Van Gisbergen. So both those guys were really affected by that contact. Rusty? Just wandered into Pro Drive and had a word to Adam DeBore and I said to him, do you think Chaz has the upper hand here? Can he get by Shane and pick up that spot, move maybe into fourth place? He wavered his hand from side to side and said, I'm not sure. So they're not giving away too much at the moment. But the super cheap auto race, it does look pacey, Mark, doesn't it? It does, Greg. You look at it in the right zone to the track, it looks like two or three spots where mostert has got really nice flow. In fact, in qualifying through turn five and six, the fastest car was Chas Mostert. But it doesn't, in the braking zones, look quite as good as the Red Bull Holden Racing Team Commodores because those cars have been very effective as Moffat just sneaks down the inside and he talks Lee Holdsworth out of it. There's Gary Rogers. Who's always punched well above their weight in terms of their participation in this sport over such a long period of time, over 50 years. He's brought so many superstar drivers through that organisation. He's actually got one back now. He brought Garth Tander through as a young bloke. He's got Garth Tander back there now leading the way. And Garth is doing a great job. Oh, oh, right, he's, he's doing his Popeye He's got a thing. Popeye yeah. tattoo, which we didn't really need to see. It's very So Gary. glad we missed it, actually. They need some of the spinach right in there. Oh. Uh, spinach, spinach, in my... Three words, get off, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good bloke. <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> oh, dear. 5.9 now, the gap. McGoughlin to Winker. So is Scott just driving it to a time. Yeah, yeah we've just been watching uh, here at Jarim as we we have moved away from Gary. I'm going to go to Barry instead. And, uh, we've took, you got no tats, that's good. Uh, we've been talking about James Moffat, just the speed, and Garth Tanner for that matter. And at the moment, Moff's uh, cruising along very nicely. Had a uh, lost a bit of time before because uh, Holdsworth had a bit of an undercut on the tyre strategy, but he's really getting along nicely now. Yeah, I think Lee stopped four or five laps before us and got us in the pits, and but, uh, I'd say Moff just got him, but... Uh, Coulthard's coming quick from behind, about half a second lap on him, so uh, with 15 laps to go, we'll see uh, whether Garth and Moff can hold them both off, and we can both finish in the top 10. I mean, of course, we want to go further forward, of course, we do, so we aim to do, but two in the 10 would be quite satisfactory in today, so see we go. And GT's thing's looking uh, pretty wounded. He hasn't uh, sort of complained about the lack of aerodynamic efficiency there? No, a bit of memories of uh, Sandown last year for him, I think, with the uh, front guard hanging off, and uh, again, no black flags, that so were pretty handy there, and uh, they're a bit of understeer, I think, he's complaining of, but there he's pushing on, so we'll uh, see how we finish up, Murph. Nice job, mate. Thanks, mate. Snapshot at the moment is 5.8 seconds, Murph. Glocklin over Wind Cup. The movers and shakers in the field, they're having a conversation, a seance at Red Bull Holden Racing Team. I don't know what about. So they've got a fair old margin to make here, but Mark Winterbottom up three spots, currently potentially on the podium. Lowndes up 11 spots for position number eight. Moffat up seven spots for oh, position number off. 10. Big dramas here. Yes, no. What was going on? Big uh, lockup. I'm actually going to say a few moments ago that despite the predictions and the probability that we talked about, no Vodafone safety car thus far. He's vulnerable at the moment now, isn't he, Shane? So they're going to look into those post-race investigations uh, for 23 and 99 after the game. going on here? It, it does sound off so There is definitely is a Murph, Murph sniffing around there and we might get an answer on this. So it's more than just a little rah rah of the team. This, this is it. Even the engine speed. So it's definitely off song. Definitely. Look at the gain that Moss had just made in a straight line that time. So that's why they cleared the garage because they're hoping that this engine... Well, press on till it stops, mate. Press on till it stops. behind Moss if you can't hold him to the next car. Exactly. That's good. very good advice, Grant. Just press on till it stops because it is no use. Doesn't do you any good pulling in now. Press have on. Have a listen to it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's running not rough. rough. It's not running rough. Uh, sorry, it's not running cleanly at all, is no. it? It's, it sounds like sounds like you've tuned it. And just on that, both Murph and I have been here at Red Bull Racing Australia, and, and uh, Mark Dutton was a little reluctant to talk to me. Sounds like an electrical issue of some kind for Shane. He sort of winced and said, I think it's an electrical drama. Yeah, it sounds like it's been to the Neil Crompton School of Tuning, Rusty. It's got a very seven-cylinder sound to me, that one. Let's hope that from a reliability standpoint, because we saw the drama of... Doing an amazing job here, buddy. Hang in there. Yeah, so he did a 15-2. Sounds shocking. It does. So, uh, but remember the Saturday from Darwin, the DNF cost him so significantly. <laughs> it said to me just a moment ago, it sounds expensive. So he was 0.4 slower uh, than Mostert on that last lap. Might have busted a rocker or something. It just sounds oh, really. Yeah. It's, it's not a header because it doesn't have that same rasp. Well, maybe we we'll are trying to have a listen to it when it comes down pit it's straight. It's probably a crank sensor or something that actually just makes it fire weirdly. Because you run across the curb so much, there's so much debris out there at the moment. You could easily have a damaged crank sensor and it not be firing properly. So, but interestingly, Most have stopped off in there, so I don't really know why that's the case. You saw the gain that the Falcon made on the previous lap, looking back from Shane. The gap now at the front, 5.7 seconds. So it just continues to close a little bit. Let's have a listen. Bit inconclusive, but... Um, yeah, it's not an outside, that's why it's not a header noise, is it? No, if it was a header, it'd be very obvious. And here comes Mostert having a peep down the outside now. Shane is fully blocked up down the right-hand side to make him go the long way. Looking for the crisscross. Should have more torque in the Falcon if they've got a wounded engine with the Holden. So now he just gives him a little, come on, mate. You want to be a little bit careful, Shane. He's allowed one move. He can close, but he can't move back. So if he begins to zigzag, race control will have something to say. So we're just looking at that. It's right at the end of the straight. It doesn't seem to hurt it too much in these lower-speed torque areas. Yeah. But, but it's it is, right at the end of the straight, so it's from sort of sixth gear, pull sixth gear onwards. But it is evident as a sound through the range. So that's a reassuring thing when you put the tyres back and don't leave the garage open. Here we, Here we go. Here's the dive. Now he's chosen to do that. You can see that. He put the white flag up. And then he's had another go back. Commentator's curse. I just thought he'd let him go straight by, but he hasn't. He will now because the Falcon's going to have enough sniff at the end to get him. It's actually getting off the corners at low speed quite well. well but might, be a, might be a tweak. It's got nothing down here, has it? So he leaves a pile of space for him through the kink at turn one. Look at the debris on the outside of the racetrack. The driver's getting hammered with the sun in their eyes down there at two. Listen. Right up in the top of the rev range where it's hurting it. Target fuel number four, please. Target fuel number four to bring it home. So all you can do is press on. There's no way you're going to come in and start to analyse whatever that may be. It's fifth at the moment. It's a big fistful of points. Last lap 24. Last lap 24. You can do this. You've got eight seconds behind. It's just that header. Bring it home. That's it. They're saying header. Okay, so Grant's confirming, and I can hear you in the background, Murph, go. Right. Uh, yeah, I just because he's giving him a fuel number, it's using it quite a bit more fuel, guys, because of that. Well, he says it's a header. I've been standing on the pit wall listening to it. It's just very flat in its sounding. It didn't so much sound to me like a header, but it doesn't sound louder. It just sounds very flat, but it's using more fuel, so he's having to now maintain a fuel number to make sure this thing gets to the finish and doesn't run out. So back to what Mark said before, of all places where you can disturb the underbody of the car, it's here because of all the curb hopping. It's actually sounding worse now, yeah. and uh, so as the gas escapes, it starts to sort of blow torch its own hole because of the exhaust gas temperature. So understand that at the moment, in fifth position for Shane Van Gisbergen, that's worth 111 points. Still a valuable commodity when you're chasing a championship of 26 races.
Winner gets 150, second 138, third 129, fourth 120, and fifth triple one. Rick Kelly in. What about an 11th? So right 11th, now, you will get 72 points for your trouble. So there you go. So 72 points at the moment. Fabian Coulthard to come into today with a 10-point lead. Cruel blow. Turn one for Fabian. Lots of cars making contact. Didn't really look like there was anyone in particular to blame. Just contact from behind with Tim Slade. There's McLaughlin, who has driven superbly today. Didn't quite get the jump with Wink Cup. Made a very nice pass. Has driven from a superb qualified performance. Saved a set of tyres. Got out of the car early. Was able to use those fresh tyres on the car at the second stop. And has been able to make ground despite being 10 litres out of phase with the guy who's racing Jamie Winkup. There's the provisional points. 18 is the margin between Scott and Jamie. Fabian Coulthard, that's a big hit now. 68 points adrift. Van Gisbergen, 207 down and standing by and clinging by his fingernails at the moment. Hopefully able to yield a fifth out of it with an ailing Holden Commodore in the background for him. We've got eight laps remaining now. Phil Keat is the man on the right-hand side of the screen. He's the engineer for Fabian Coulthard. And as Mark had me look there a moment ago, points-wise, that's a 72-point yield for Fabian. So probably not a bad recovery when you stop and think about it. He's facing the wrong way at turn two, lap one. That was pretty ugly. That's right. So if you put that in perspective, he was 10 points leading up. 68 points on the rears now, so although it was a drama, I actually thought from the damage that he may not have even finished that race, so still the 78 point loss is better than a 150 point loss. Compared to say for example Tander and Van Gisbergen in Darwin where they come away with a donut, that's no fun at all. James Moffat on screen, here's been another strong run for him. Did a very good job in Darwin last time out, car number 34 for Wilson Security Racing. His, uh, Qualifying third in Darwin was really impressive, wasn't it? He certainly seems a lot happier with this machine than he was in the Volvo. And he was stronger than Garth Pander in Darwin. So he's sitting there at the moment in 10th. Previous best here at Townsville was in 11th. So it's a, a small improvement for him and a nice yield of points. There has been, as you said before, there's been some great drives through the field today. We talk about Louds and his racecraft all the time, but to come up 11 positions is just extraordinary. Tander up four, Moffat up seven. Very good drives. Simona Di Silvestro up seven positions. Chance that Fabian will get a bit more in the way of points here. He's up the inside of Tim Slade, who's out of position. He's down in 20th. But uh, he might still get some yield here, Fabian, and that'll be squarely in his mind at the moment. We battled to actually pull that up then. Lock the rears going in there. Here's the situation with Van Gisbergen, who's now under threat from Cam Waters. And uh, the difference, the swing between fifth and sixth, if you're Van Gisbergen, fifth is 111 points and sixth is 102 points. And you can see the graphic tells the story about the way in which Cam is starting to Close down on that margin. Who's also been impressive this year. His game year on year has been really good for Cam Waters. Ninth in the championship coming into this race. The Monster Energy Ford Falcon Pro Drive. Went away in the off season. Got some coaching. Thought deeply about the process. Working carefully with his engineer. Just working on the craftsmanship. Coming up with the right setup combinations. They've clicked and now we see this young guy who's been very strong in Dunlop Super 2, champion back in 2015. Suddenly he's in the game. It's great to see. Remember, he's only 22 years of age. Early days for him coming into the weekend, 56 races. So there's a big chance to get him, isn't he? Brad Wushes and the engineer in the background. Shane, the situation will be getting worse there. So that's an easy beat down the inside pass. So Shane will try and offer up some resistance, but not much he can do. He just does not have the firepower. And 
he may well be vulnerable now to David Reynolds as well. Yeah, this would be exasperating for Shane Van Gisberg. It's normally him doing all the rough and tumble at the end. A little bump there with Michael Caruso and Aaron Russell. Aaron Russell, Nova Castrian back in, subbing for Lucas Number of Motorsport. Nice save, Aaron Russell. Big slide, caught it up. Michael Caruso came out of the throttle and didn't bump him. But the story we did earlier in the day about Canberra and putting that tread face on the road, keeping the wheels connected and the ride control of the car. And Dick Johnson Racing Team Penske, they've got these cars working beautifully. Those tyres sitting very squarely on the road, using all 300 millimetres, using it well. Number 23, Michael Caruso, he's 14. So considering the rough afternoon that he's had, troubles that he had in the pit lane, he's actually recovered pretty well, hasn't he? He has. They're going to get a decent little haul of points for his trouble. Four laps remaining for our leaders. No evidence of the Vodafone safety car. McLaughlin's on target here at the moment. It'll be the first time in 2017 that he leads the championship. It's a provisional statement at the moment, but it looks like it's about to come a reality. He's never had a podium at this location. But he's had five podiums in the last championship race, uh, six championship races, I beg your pardon. We've seen great qualifying speed from him here before. And has any click with this team, this group, that engineer? Now David Reynolds is about to prey on Shane Van Gisbergen. The other problem with the press on, and there is no other choice, Depending on where it's fractured, the header, if that's what the case is, and it sounds like it may be, there is, a, to some extent, a fire risk, or at least a wiring risk. It can hurt other things yeah. in the process of just letting it breathe all that hot air or gas. So David's lining him up now, got the crosshairs on him. No top end has it. He's going to get completely attacked by David Reynolds. Because he's doing everything he can. It's a valiant battle to try and fight. Actually, David ended up out there in the wide. Probably wanted to affect the crisscross. But he had no grip out there. So see how long it took him to be able to actually arrest the speed, change the direction of the car, and fire it to the north. Exactly. The mission. Well, it shows how good the chassis still is on Shane's car. But he knows... David's got to get by because it's actually got a difference in the position in the championship at the moment with he and Cam Waters very close. But have a look at the guy looming in the background. Craig Lowndes is making huge ground on both of these. So Lowndes won't be messing around if he gets to the back of Dave Reynolds. So Dave now right up in behind. He's got to be close coming on to the straight for him to affect that pass going down into turn two. This will be an interesting number, these speed numbers, as we get down closer to the end of the straight. You'll see the difference. Have a look at this. Watch Reynolds. You'll see it start to accelerate by in terms of those numbers. Reynolds now. So there you go. There's 230 versus 220. 240 versus 225. So massive gain. Oh, and he's given him a hit. And he's pushed him wide. He actually gave him a bump there in the braking area. And there comes... A fast-finishing Craig Lowndes. Uh, he's going to redress that. So David's decided that it's not worth risking getting a penalty and a slap on the wrist afterwards. I think uh, Shane fed him a wheel there at one stage as well. So he's going to have to go through it again. And it's a complete Christmas gift for Craig Lowndes. So um, that's a choice for the driver. It's not written into the rules. It's up to David to make that call. And it still may not mitigate the penalty. It's just something that's taken into consideration by the driving standards advisor and the stewards. A bit of history with these two. Remember a couple of years ago at Phillip Island with Van Gisberg and spinning Dave Reynolds when Reynolds was in contention in the championship. So Dave will be pretty motivated to get by given that he's got huge car speed. Well, from an engine standpoint he has. He hasn't got much better car speed around the back of the track. But McLaughlin looks like he's on track. What a great year he's having. Great drive. Great team. Lap speed was very impressive when it counted. Had a 10 litre deficiency in the way they played the strategy, but those new tyres on the rear were put to great effect. 
comfortable margin of five seconds being confirmed by his engineer, Ludo Lacroix. Flashing the lights to the appreciative crowd. This is going to be a very big moment in his championship chase because after he crosses the line, he will lead the championship. He's done it four times already this year. He lines up to the flag. He's about to make it five in 2017. Winning on the streets of Townsville is Scotty McLaughlin. Well done. Awesome job, Scotty. Awesome job. We need to save these tyres for tomorrow, so no celebrating, mate. No celebrating. Great job. Four seconds the margin to win cup in the end. A great drive by Mark Winterbottom. So McLaughlin, win cup, winner bottom, one, two, and three. And the battle continues for the miners with the problems that Van Gisbergen's having. <laughs> He's got Tander next in the queue. Reynolds has lost ground to Tander in that process. Exactly. So will Shane Van Gisbergen hang on to the line? Here comes a fast finishing guard, Tander. He might grab him. He doesn't quite get there. Van Gisbergen hangs on for seven. McLaughlin, Wincup, Winterbottom, Mostert, Waters, Lowndes, Van Gisbergen, Tander, Reynolds, Moffat, Fabian Coulthard, 11. And let's have a look what happened to David Reynolds here. He's in the battle here with Garth Tander. Drops a spot. So he had to affect the redress. He decided that when he bumped the back of Shane Van Gisbergen's car, that he ran the risk of a penalty post-race. That's ended up hurting him, but it was probably the right decision. Yeah, but Shane had covered to the right. He hadn't done anything wrong, although he was slow. He was almost driving in the gutter. He was very aggressive. But the focus right now is this man. 150 points in the bank for Scotty McLaughlin. Win number five for this championship season. Takes his career tally to a lucky 13. <laughs> and what an extraordinary season he's having. A benchmark qualifier, a man who has made very, very few mistakes in the last few rounds of this championship. He just continues to rack up the points, and it mostly comes from raw car speed, from raw brilliance. A young man from New Zealand, he's only 24. He drives the car very similar to Craig Lowndes in terms of style. And wow, what a performance today. Great pass on Wing Cup and has not made a mistake since he got to the lead. Winner race seven in Western Australia. Race eight in Western Australia. Race nine at Winton. Race 12 in Darwin in the Northern Territory. And now race number 13 on the streets of Townsville into the Virgin Australia victory lane. And you also have the Virgin Australia championship leader board in front of him as well. Sparkle in the eyes of Scotty McLaughlin and all for the right reasons. Great drive. He's the man. 4.09 seconds over Jamie Wincup at the flag fall. And Not bad to recover from losing the start to Wincup. Exactly, and how consistent is, is Wing Cup 2 now? You know, he just keeps on racking the points in Darwin. He's lamenting it was another second, and it was the fifth of them. He's probably going to say it again, but it's still not a bad outcome if he can't win. There's Ludo Lacroix, the engineer on the right there, thrilled for his young charge. And uh, they're really settling in as a combo now, and we're starting to see and feel the full effects of that partnership. What a great performance. So Scott McLaughlin gets it done and his podium tally now for the season moves on to eight because it's not just about the winning either, it's also about some of the minor placings. Let's hear from the winner. Scott McLaughlin, he just wants to congratulate his team as he always does. I'm chasing him on each side of the cut. Scott McLaughlin, welcome back to the Virgin Australia. Victory Lane, your first win here on the streets of Townsville. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic for the guys at Shelby Power Racing. Uh, gave me an awesome car. Had an awesome battle there with J-Dub at the start. Um, made a little bit of ju judgment error into turn one and gave him a little bump. Uh, got away with it and, um, but man, we had some fun out there. It was awesome. Now you're the new championship leader for 2017. That's cool. That's cool. Um, it's, it's, you know, it was our goal to, you know, come here, get a couple of podiums and just stay in the fight. So, um, yeah, we're well and truly doing that. So we'll see how we go tomorrow. Enjoy the celebrations.
on the podium. Jamie Winkup, you got the start, but then he got the finish. <laughs> but you're here on the podium once again in Townsville. I think it's the 11th time here in Townsville. Yeah, I, I enjoy this place. We um, pushed on from the start. Congrats to Scotty and the crew. They were just too quick today. I couldn't make a race of it. So we'll do the best we can to, um, to put on a bit more better show tomorrow. Enjoy the celebrations on the podium. Mark Winterbottom, welcome back to Virgin Australia Victory Lane. It's been a couple of races in between drinks, but great to see you back here on the podium. Yeah, awesome. Um, you know, we've been working hard and obviously Darwin wasn't what we wanted and we come back and had three cars in the top six and I got a good start, which was awesome, and the car was OK, just not as quick as the other two, but, um, but yeah, P3. From where we come from four weeks ago, it's a damn good result. So proud of the boys and girls at work. and.